Welcome back, friends. Lost Craft here, and it's time for the vlog. Let's get right into it. I want to get back to playing Monster Hunter Rise. So, first talk about Rise. Rise is an interesting idea of combining generations and worlds ideas. There's some ideas from world that got expanded, and some ideas that are still in there, but it's to a lesser extent. Monsters still fight, but turf wars aren't a thing. You still have like environmental things, but they expanded on that, and even environmental buffs and things like that, which is pretty cool. The Jaggy Mount is the Palamute. And some other ideas going on here. And what I like is, so there's two teams working on Monster Hunter. One team is working on World, and then the other team is doing the spin-offs and Generations and things like that. So you have these two main games for Monster Hunter that are happening. And one happens and the other one happens and so on and so forth. And so they're going to keep influencing each other. The thing is, one has less restriction because it's more for PC and the bigger consoles, the stronger consoles. Well, the other one is more for, like, Switch. So, there is strength in doing things without limit. More, without certain limits. And there is strength with doing things with limits. How do you make a diamond? With pressure. With restrictions. With, uh, with limitations. That's how you make a diamond. So, it's interesting to see ideas as they flourish without as many restrictions. And ideas that deal with restrictions and what creativity you can get from there. I mean, because there are different levels of creativity you can get from both uh, restriction and without restriction. So that's what I like is we're going to get a really good Monster Hunter game every time because they're constantly forging from these different pulls and not pulls. So that's pretty cool to me. So just mentioning that. It's a really fun game. I love it. It's great. It's going to be somewhere up there in the top 10 at the end of the year. So channel stuff, uh, Kirby podcast, episode 41 and 42 have been recorded. It's a two-part. It's been recorded. Probably get the 43 and maybe 44 before we do Kirby Superstar. And that's going to be a big, big episode, maybe multiple episodes, because that's a big game. That's a lot in there to talk about. And that'll be a lot of fun. There are a lot of interviews about Superstar. Some are in English, some are not. So a lot of digging I'm going to have to do for that, because there's interesting stuff in there. Like, I think it's like 1994, Sakurai talking about some things about Superstar and just Kirby in general, and some bits translated, some bits not. And it's going to be interesting trying to dig all that up and just see if someone has translated things. Uh, basically, a podcast. There's going to be a talk. I'm going to record it today on Winter Soldier and Falcon. Episode 2 was pretty good. And on the Suicide Squad trailer, that was also pretty good. Talk about those things. I still haven't gotten a guest. I haven't tried to get a guest in a while, though. Right now, I haven't tried to get a guest. I'm just dealing with everything else that we're doing. Recorded the third Amiibo tournament, which was really good. Oh, my God. I'm very happy with the results of the Amiibos. They're having some amazing fights. And so that's going to make for a really fun video. Not a lot of people watch them, which is unfortunate, but it's still really good. So if I can find the community that would watch those things, I think they'll have a lot of fun. And that's what's important to me is making a video that if the right niche finds it, they'll love the hell out of it. I can't entertain everyone, but I can entertain certain people for sure. And I think they would really love this, this tournament. Other things. Oh, LPs. Side channel. Almost done with Hades. We've got the epilogue. Just need to get the last relationships. And then that is done. And then it'll be Braley Default 2 on the side channel LP. Braley Default 2 is nice, but it's there's two ways to see it. If you argue for one, it's better. If you argue for the other one, it's not. As a story, I know some people prefer this over the other two games. And it's so good for them. I don't know yet. I think I prefer the other two still. But we'll see. I'm not done with the story. As a game, it's inferior. It just is. It is a slower experience. It is a grindier experience. It is not as well put as the first two. And I think part of it might just have to be with the pandemic, where they weren't able to do as much quality of life with it because of the pandemic. I really think I can give them that excuse. And because of that, it's just an inferior game. At the end of the day, we'll see. Maybe there's some big twists that'll make it better. I don't know. But right now, I'd say as a story, I don't know yet. But as a game, it is inferior to the first two games for sure. Still good. Still worth playing. And it's going to go on the side channel, not the main channel. Main channel LPs, Professor Layton's coming, uh, but after that, I don't know. Portal 2's coming out, uh, well, Portal 2's 10-year 10, 10 anniversary's coming, and I'm gonna play the whole thing again on stream, I'm excited for that, and the LP will either go on side channel or main channel, depending on how good it is, and what else is happening. If there is a new game coming out 
that you think might be worth LPing, let us know so we can look at it. I don't have anything in mind that I want to do that's coming out this year for the main channel right now. I just don't have anything. Of course, I'm not looking that hard either. Just been busy with so many projects, I haven't looked that hard. But the next RPG LP for the main channel is gonna be uh, either, I keep saying it, we haven't done the vote yet, it's gonna be Final Fantasy VI, or it's gonna be Mario RPG. Haven't put out the vote yet. And for those, uh, we would cut out some of the grind. We would definitely cut out some of the grind there. Maybe I would do some of the grind off camera. I don't know. But we would cut some of it out, depending on how much there is, to just speed it up a little bit. Especially 6. 6 has got plenty of grinding to it. Plenty of random encounters. Well, Mario, the encounters aren't as random. Some of it's just, you know, you go through a set in a dungeon and things like that. So there are things to cut out, but not as much as would be in 6. But we're going to do either both RPGs eventually in the future anyway. So... Um, just in the future, yeah. Six would get some grinding cut out for sure. Well, the way we would do RPGs is you don't grind until you lose. So, um, uh, just go straight through, get to the boss fight. If we lose, then we go back and grind, and that would be off cam. I think that's the best way to do it. But there's just a lot of just random counters on the way that can bore that can bore down a game. So if there's just too much of that, that would get cut out as well. You know, just you know, just clean it up a bit. Make it more entertaining, much faster, because grinding isn't that interesting unless you have a lot to talk about. And the way you would make that better is... Oh, I'm going off on this. The way you would make an RPG better is if you talk about just facts or if you have someone else to talk to while you're playing. That's the only way to make it more entertaining. And since I do this alone when it comes to the recording parts, I have to know either a lot of facts about a game or it's just, yeah, there's nothing to talk about. And so we would just want to cut that out the only way to do it really if you want to make it still entertaining i feel because these long lulls of nothing entertaining happening is just what's that going to do for anybody really anything else i think that's everything so there's no philo there's some philosophy to talk about here and it'll be in part of the what i want to talk about which is politics and hopefully i don't go too long on this because i want to get back to Moss Center. at the end of the day i'll say i'm centrist but there's a lot of things that i don't like about republicans that makes me sound more Democrat. But there's plenty of things that Democrats are not a fan of at the end of the day. But I guess I'm center-left then, because of that. And... Well, what's, what's another thing to say here? Well, an actual centrist. An actual centrist. I think it's important to make the distinction here. There is the both-side centrists, which are stupid. And then there's just, you're a centrist, and you actually vote, and you actually pick things. Because there are centrists like, well, both sides are shit, or both sides have things about them, and then they don't actually vote, and I hate those. Those are the stupidest people ever. If you... You don't get to have a political opinion if you don't actually vote. I just don't feel like you should. I really don't. Because you're not doing anything. You're not doing anything with that opinion. That is a little rant right there. Because there are plenty of centrists who are like, well, there's crap here and crap here, and then I don't vote. And it's like, then you don't exist. You just don't exist. That is a person who doesn't exist. We're not talking about those people. So with centrists, like, you actually have opinions on things, and you actually vote on these things, and you vote on these things. That's a centrist worth talking to, and that's me, damn it. Anyway, anyway, anyway. My problem, though, is... There's things that ding on both sides on, for sure. But it's just... When it comes to Democrats, it feels like it's just them self-owning... When it comes to Republicans, it just feels more nefarious what the hell's going on. I think it's because there's just... They're more focused with their groups for the Republicans, while Democrats are just a coalition of so many ideas in, in opposition to Republicans that you get why they self-fumble so much. Because there's just so many different things going on there. A lot of, cent no, a lot of uh, centrist going on there. A lot of uh, progressive going on there. A lot of extremes... There's a lot of just this wide margin over there working together, and so there's a lot of back and forth there. Whereas the right does have that, but there's also these the really silly extremes as well. But they're just more cohesive in their bullshit. But really, I just don't know how you can be a self-respecting Republican in a lot of ways. And one to bring up has got to be what's going on with Georgia. 
And I keep wondering, was that the right move or not, where they made it that you could not give someone water if they're in line for voting? Really weird. It comes off as callous. It comes off as heartless from the Republicans to do that. But they had some worse things in there that they had to cut out because it just wasn't going to work out. Because there was enough pushback on that. And I wonder if it's there as basically just a, a smokescreen. You have so much attention on this, you're not noticing the other nefarious things they had in that bill. Or is it going to backfire, and since people are mad about this, they'll look at the other things and be mad about those as well, as one big package deal. I don't know which one it is, it's still young on that, but plenty of people are mad about that one part right there. So Jinx had a thought experiment, and that was... What if we made gun rights equal to voting rights? You have to vote to get a gun. And if we want everyone to have guns, then we want everyone to vote, right? Or is it more important that not everyone votes? <laughs> so that there can be just less people with guns as well. I don't know. Here's the thing that Republicans don't understand. Well, some Republicans, because there's plenty of people who do as well. There are plenty of gun owners that are Democrat. It's just an it's a difference of ideology on voting on gunning restrictions. Just who can have a gun and things like that. And what's frustrating is we're back to normal when it comes to school shooting. Not school shoot. We're back to normal when it comes to mass shootings, not just schools. We're back to normal on mass shootings, and that's very frustrating. And the and we're just doing the same dance again. And I'm just so tired of it so much. I'm really tired of the same dance happening again and again and again. Republicans keep saying we have a mental health issue, not a gun rights issue. While Democrats feel like, well, if we take the guns out of their hands, then we don't have to worry about it. Truth, truth of the matter is, both are a problem, but nothing's been done about either one. And the frustrating thing is, you, the same song dance keeps happening, well then, yeah. If mental health is the issue, then why don't we have voting... Not vote, why don't we have... Background checks so that mental health cannot get the gun. I don't understand why we don't do that, Republicans. I don't understand why you won't do that. You keep saying, well, there is, this is the actual issue, but then you don't do anything about it. And the camera's out of focus because of my hand moving. Did not work. I'm going to keep trying to do this. It's going to be really, really bugging you guys as I do this. All right, so... <clears throat> did it work? It did work. Okay, so... Yeah... It's, it's a frustrating thing. And another frustrating thing is just the inconsistency when it comes to Republicans. Both parties have been consistent, and I feel like Democrats are inconsistent because they just have so many parties to deal with. But Republicans not being consistent across the country is odd in that Utah. Utah exists. Utah does all the voting things that Republicans say can be corrupted. They've been doing it for a lot longer than everyone else. They know how to do it. The rest, the rest of the country should really learn from Utah when it comes to voting. But they're Republicans, so they don't complain about it over there. Because the truth of the matter is, when more people vote, Democrats win. When less people vote, Republicans win. Instead of trying to court more groups and to make it that more people vote because it should be democracy speaking, Republicans are just, like, instead of Republicans changing their ways to get that if more people t vote that they win, they're trying to restrict it so less people vote. How is that more democratic to make less people vote? There are really dumb things in our country that are not democratic in any way, but they exist. And they really just gamify politics, which is not what it should be in any way. It's very frustrating. That's one thing just to complain about. These vlogs are philosophical talks and also venting. Right now it's venting. The other thing to vent about is gotta be, since I live in San Diego, the border. So, it's been an inherited problem for presidents across the ages. It's just the problem has evolved, depending on the situation. I'd say the current situation, started with Obama, has been and has been inherited along the way. Trump inherited a situation from Obama. Biden has inherited a situation from Trump. And honestly... It's just a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation there. But Trump made it so much worse when he made it so racist and just so callous and so heartless. When Obama had it, kids were in cages. They were. Very unfortunate. That was the best answer they could come up with. They were just trying to come up with more places to have more kids held, and they were doing cages because just to divide them up 
It wasn't good. It was not good at all. But it's what they were doing. The border was a bipartisan issue. Then Trump came in and made it racist as balls, and it stopped being a bipartisan issue. It became a different issue. That border wall was going to happen with bipartisan support, and Trump just made it worse. And then it became a bargaining chip. And really, DACA should just happen. Uh, it should have happened then. DACA should have just happened then. And, like, his Democrats were willing to do the deal of, we'll give you the wall if you give us DACA, and Trump just wasn't willing to do that. He, was, he just wanted to be, only he wins in this whole thing. And that wasn't going to work out. He had to do a whole bunch of bullshit to make the wall finally happen. And that's not good for America at all, what he did to us. And at the end of the day, yeah, he made a big wall, and still, they made ladders to go over it, and they made tunnels to go under it. Damn wall doesn't work. And the way Trump dealt with just the influx of migrants coming in, not pretty in any way, very callous, very effed up, not great. And now we've got Biden inheriting that and trying to deal with it. And his answers are not going to be great. They're going to look bad no matter what he does. He just has to make an answer and try to pull it out, try to pull off, try to do something with it. There's no pretty answer to what's going on at the border at all. There just isn't. And it, why is it? It's because of, honestly, politics. Politics more than anything. It's just politics. It's people being like they're taking our jobs or they just don't want these dirty brown people here or whatever thing. It's very frustrating because the truth of the matter is America loves these people. America loves migrants. America loves to use migrants because what country are we? We're a capitalist country. Capitalism loves cheap labor. And immigrants... Cheap labor. We love this stuff. We can afford this because of cheap labor. We can afford so many things because of cheap labor. Our food, our fast food, is cheap because of cheap labor. Farmers have miserable lives and existences trying to survive because they don't get paid as well as they could be. Farmers rely on sheep laborers. They rely on migrants. They rely on these people coming over and picking their strawberries or picking their fruit or helping with livestock or picking mushrooms, just picking produce. They rely on the cheap labor. Immigrants are not stealing jobs from anybody because nobody wants these jobs. Nobody wants to be the janitor. Nobody wants to be the housekeeper. Nobody wants to be picking in the fields. Nobody wants to be the landscaper. Cheap labor, coming from other countries, is doing those jobs for us because nobody wants to do them. What we don't want, of course, is I guess, is we don't want the smarter people coming in and replacing our doctors and things like that, I guess. But that's still racist in a different way. Because honestly, we could use more doctors. We could use more nurses. We really could. Especially right now. It's a very, it just feels like a very racist thing more than anything else. Which is weird because we like being able to afford luxuries. This was made off the suffering of so many people. So many things have been made off the suffering of so many people. Cheap labor. Everything's made in China for a reason. They have all the cheap labor they can get over there. Like, they have so much of it, they can distribute it. America made itself reliant on the rest of the world. We, lo we got rid of so many manufacturing jobs so they could be cheaply made in other countries. That is the truth of the matter. We love cheap labor. We love people from the rest of the world doing things for us. Republicans are anti-globalization. We've been globalized for a couple couple decades now. We made ourselves reliant on other countries. We did it to ourselves. They didn't do it to us. We enriched China by giving them all of our manufacturing jobs. We enriched many other countries. It's a very stupid thing that we're doing with the border. We can't we also just can't have it be just wide open because yes, drugs that are coming through there. Drugs are coming under the wall. Drugs are coming over the wall. It's a complicated issue, because it's not just workers. It is, of course, drugs as well. Yes, that's true. 
That's why it's a it's a pain in the ass issue. There are people coming in for the purest reasons, and there are people coming in for the least pure reasons. But at no point wasn't Mexico sending their killers and their worst people. It was just everyone was coming. And when everyone comes, there's good and there's bad. And that's what vetting's for. That's what interviews are for. And that's what all that is for. You don't just let them through, of course. You gotta talk with them and everything. But making it harder and harder or just random regular people, just boo. Alright, that's the vlog. I went way longer than I wanted to. So I'm done. I had fun talking. I've been fun watching and listening. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? Having fun. Thanks for coming by and see you next time. Thank you.